We all know that getting into medicine is notoriously difficult, particularly at Oxford and Cambridge. And of all the hoops we have to jump through, the hardest one is probably the interview. At these universities, the interviews are unique in that there is a heavy focus on the basic sciences and they examine how you react to unfamiliar concepts. If you're anything like me, the idea of being put on the spot and really being stretched academically is quite daunting. So it's important that we best prepare for the interview. In this video, we're going to be talking about the interviews for medicine at Oxford and Cambridge and the best way to prepare for them. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. In this video, we'll cover the format of the interviews for medicine at Oxford and Cambridge and how they're used in admissions. We'll discuss how we can prepare for them with mock interviews and other specific practical things that you should do before your interview. In my opinion, the interview is the most important part of the application process. This is because it's the most challenging part and it's a key discriminator between applicants. It also gives the admissions tutor a chance to get to know you more as a person, which is important because ultimately they are the ones who are making the final decision. And particularly here at Cambridge, where they interview almost 80% of applicants, a good showing at the interview can make up for a slightly lower BMAT score. However, don't stress yourself too much because both Oxford and Cambridge take a holistic approach to applications. So it's not the end of the world if it doesn't quite go your way at interview. So a lot of the information we'll mention today is covered in my applying to medicine document, so check that out, there's a link in the description box below. So anyway, let's get started. Firstly, it's important to know what the format of the interview will be so we can tailor our preparation accordingly. Usually you hear about whether you're invited to interview shortly after the BMAT results are released. And the interview itself is usually around the first or second week of December. This doesn't give us long to prepare, so you probably want to start preparation at least a couple of weeks earlier so you actually get sufficient time to build your base of skills. Because after all, the interview is not something you can really cram for. They're looking out for certain skills. For the interview itself, you actually get multiple interviews, so that's more fun for us. At Cambridge, you usually get two or three 20 minute interviews from one college on the same day. Most interviews will have two interviewers and each will take half the interview. For Oxford, it's similar apart from you usually get interviewed by two colleges and this is spread across more dates. And you usually hear about offers or rejections on the first or second week of January. Be aware that this year due to the pandemic, the interview will be conducted remotely and we'll be discussing the implications of this in another video. In theory, the interview format aims to replicate that of a supervision or tutorials for the Oxford folk. This is a teaching style specific to Oxbridge where the supervisor introduces a topic, then we discuss the core material or revolving around that topic and then we go into further detail with some of the concepts. The interview is heavily focused on science. They usually start with a concept which is somewhat familiar to you from AS level, but then they might introduce some new information which you've never come across before and see how you respond to that, guiding you along the way in case you get stuck. You might have come across some horror questions online about something like how many tennis balls you can fit in an elephant or estimate the mass of air in this room. The key thing to note is the interview rarely starts off like this and these are usually a product of 20 minutes Prior discussion. But I do want you to be aware that what's becoming increasingly common is for them to give you kind of a short article to read or some data and asking you to interpret it, giving your own thoughts and analysis. This is because as doctors, information is freely available for us online. Pretty much the answer to any question in medicine is just one Google search away. So they aren't really interested in what you already know, but how you can adapt this thinking to unfamiliar concepts and integrating them to the complex patients we'll be treating in the future. Sometimes you might have one interview where they talk about more about you as a person and maybe go through your personal statement and talk about the professional qualities of a doctor. But this is not always the case. Sometimes it's just purely focused on science. So check out the website of your chosen college to see if they've mentioned anything about the content of your interview. So now we know what the interviews entail, let's talk about how we can best prepare for this format. By far the best way to prepare for the interview is to do plenty of mock interviews. And the important thing is that they should be as close to the real interview format as possible. One of the pitfalls is that schools sometimes arrange some teachers to give interviews to students, but they'll ask really bog standard questions like, why do you want to study medicine? Or tell us about your work experience. However, you're not likely to get many of these questions at Oxford and Cambridge. Therefore, it's up to you to take the initiative and ask what you need. Tell the teachers who might be conducting interviews for you that you want questions about stuff which you have not covered in your A-levels so far and ask them to work through problems with you like an admissions tutor would do during an interview. This is the best way to develop your critical thinking skills under the pressure of an interview. I've got some examples of the types of things your teachers could ask you for an Oxbridge style interview in my applying to medical school document in case they don't really know what to ask. So be sure to check that out. There's a link in the description box. Just one thing I'll add is make sure that you don't compartmentalize the sciences too much. Often you need to take a concept from 
chemistry then apply it to biology and then there'll be some equation which comes up which you need your math skills to sort out to arrange it into a suitable graph which you, you can then interpret basically what i'm trying to say is that all the sciences blend together so make sure that you're thinking through these problems holistically this is because the integration of information is a high level skill so if you can develop that before your interview you'll stand out during the interview to get the most out of these mock interviews, it's really important that you treat them seriously like the proper interview. I mean, your teacher is literally giving out time which they could be spending with their family or getting on with some work. So after the interview, ask your teacher if you could, if they could debrief you on your performance. This is where they could guide you on how you could have improved your thought processes. And this is where the improvement of your critical thinking skills comes in. You can also ask them to give you feedback on certain mannerisms you might have. For example, not maintaining proper eye contact or if you keep saying, um, muffle a lot when you're talking. If you can't arrange interviews with teachers or other people who can conduct this style of interview, your best bet is to look at like biology, chemistry or physics Olympiad papers. This again will test unfamiliar content and will help you think more broadly outside your subject syllabi. And hopefully this will help develop your problem solving capabilities. So next we're gonna consider some of the other practical things that you can do to prepare for your Oxbridge interview. So in this part of the video, I'm just going to go through like a list of stuff you can do to, to prepare. So one thing that you should be aware is that you should be familiar with all the topics that you've covered so far in your A-levels. This is probably more important for Cambridge to be familiar with the topics because you've declared them on your SAQ. So your interviewers might have actually planned your interview based on what you have and haven't covered so far. However, this is by far not the most important thing to do in preparation. The most important is to develop your critical thinking and problem solving skills through mock interviews. So don't get carried away just doing revision. This is because the interviewers don't really care how much you know, but how you think and how you process new information given to you. So when you're revising, just be familiar with the general concepts. This means you don't need to worry about reading to the end of the A-level syllabi because they know you haven't finished a course yet. So don't worry about that. So if I was to give like one little bro tip, is if there's anything, I'd recommend you being more comfortable with the stuff about genetics, inheritance patterns, and stuff about the central dogma. Because these ideas are so key to medicine and underpin loads of the undergraduate course here. These topics, although I can't guarantee will come up, are always good to know about. Also, another thing is just don't neglect maths because the interviewers are well within their right to ask you to manipulate equations or whatever, which requires some appreciation of A-level maths. So don't completely ignore that. Secondly, make sure to read over your personal statement and highlight any points which the interviewers might ask you questions about. For example, if you've mentioned any scientific terminology, make sure you know what they mean. If you've claimed you've read any books, make sure you've actually read them. If you've talked about work experience, be prepared to reflect on it a bit more. Thirdly is prepare for answers to some common medicine questions. So like why medicine, tell us about your work experience, that type of stuff. I mean, these questions may or may not come up, especially at Oxford and Cambridge, where it's mainly scientifically focused. But in case they do come up, having like just even a bullet point plan of what to say for each of these questions can give you more confidence. Your answers shouldn't be too long. They only should be like a minute or so. If you can give a nice polished answer that can give you confidence for the rest of the interview. Next is compile like a small list of news or journal articles or other books that you've read recently relating to science. You want to demonstrate that you are engaging with the subject and you're reading around the subject for your own enjoyment and academic curiosity rather than just for the personal statement. So I remember before my interview, I went to the library and I took some magazines such as Biological Sciences Review. and I just photocopied some interesting articles which caught my eye and actually just read them uh, on the car journey down to Cambridge. So that is something which you could consider doing as well. Also, there are plenty of resources on the internet, like mock interviews on YouTube, and also some colleges even release their interview format and sample questions. So I remember St. John's College in Cambridge definitely did this. So be sure to check those out so you get a better flavor of what the interview would be like. And finally, it's really important that you get used to vocalizing your thoughts and vocalizing your thoughts about the subject. Get your parents and siblings or friends to ask you questions. Talk about current affairs, the future of science, and anything which is kind of topical over the dinner table. And this is really important, and sometimes it's kind of neglected because you can know everything in the world about your subject, but if you don't know how to communicate it, and importantly communicate it to the interviewers, it's kind of pointless. If you can do this with strangers, perhaps people you don't quite know so well at school or anything like that, just that added pressure and awkwardness and being able to have a conversation with them can really develop your communication skills. So that's something worthwhile doing while you're preparing for interviews. And just one thing I want you all to take away from this video is that at the end of the day, the interviewers are looking for someone who is teachable and has the capability of handling a degree at Cambridge or Oxford. 
for that matter. This is because your interviewers are likely to be your teachers during your first year studies. So they're really looking out for someone who they'd want to teach and would think would thrive in the Oxbridge environment. In that way, we should really be paying attention to how we come across an interview. And we'll be talking more about this and interview technique in a future video. So that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. There's a lot of information, but hopefully you can go back over the video and go through the things which were most useful or some things you didn't catch. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so for more videos and this applying to medical school series. If you have any questions, please drop me a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you on that. So take care and bye for now.